exciting video for you today. Um, it's a very sensitive video, but it's exciting. I've asked Tony to come back, and we're doing a great video on foreclosure. And it was prompted by a telephone call that I got from a client of mine. And the call was just not a regular call. What it was is it was a panic call. He called me and he said, listen, I'm in foreclosure. And I asked him, I said, well, did you receive letters from the bank? Did they not have any communication with you? And he said, yeah, I did, but uh, I ignored it, which is probably the worst thing he could have done, but regardless. And I said, well, why didn't you call me? And he said, well, I was embarrassed. And you know what? I know this is a really sensitive subject and it can be pretty scary. And it is embarrassing for some, but I don't judge. And I can tell you this, that the best thing you can do is open the lines of communication. And that's just what I did. What I managed to do is I opened the lines of communication with the bank, with the lawyer, and with my client. And I'm happy to say that it all worked out well. He's back in good standings. But I thought it was really important that you get a little more information on this. That's why I've asked Tony to come back. We've got some great information. So sit back, relax, and I'll bring him on in two secs. Okay, Tony, welcome back. I'm glad to, uh, to have you back with me. Uh, most of the viewers probably recognize you from last time, but uh, just to do a quick reintro, uh, Tony, you're the owner of probably one of the largest real estate specific law firms, um, bcrealestatelaw.com, is it? Yeah, that's our website, bcrealestatelawyers.com. It's Spaniolo and Company, but the website is BC Real Estate Lawyers. Right, and, and I say in the lower main lab, but probably BC because you've got offices now in the Okanagan, is that correct? Yeah, we have two in Greater Kelowna. We're also in Nanaimo as of a month or two ago, and no plans of slowing down. We plan on being province-wide fairly soon. So Beautiful. Well, yeah. i got to be honest with you, Tony. Since the success of our last video, I was a little concerned to ask you back. I, I was worried you might go a little uh, George Clooney on me and tell me I had to talk to your agent or something. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. My wife will keep knocking me down. Don't worry yeah. about that. Anyway, George all joking aside, uh, Tony, this is a you know, pretty serious subject for many people foreclosure and uh, what I'd like to do if possible is kind of pick it up from a guy or family having a, a mortgage with uh, a bank and institution and obviously they've fallen a little bit behind on their payment probably received some communication uh, typically most people are ignoring it which is probably the worst thing they can do but maybe you can pick it up from that point and sort of go through the process Sure, yeah. What typically happens, uh, and you're right, the worst thing to do is to ignore it early because it's not going to go away by ignoring it. But mm -hmm. uh, at some point, the bank will get fed up and they'll retain a lawyer uh, to send out a, a nasty demand letter. And the demand letter is going to say you've got a couple of weeks to, to buck up, to, to, to redeem the mortgage, to bring it, to clear up the arrears, or we're going to foreclose. Mm -hmm. That letter typically comes out two to three months after the arrears begin. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it has to be that way. The bank could just send it out. If you're a day late in your payment, technically you're in default, and the bank could uh, send out that letter to start the process. And I have been involved in some files in years past where the bank just wanted to get rid of that borrower. And so the moment they were a day late, they sent out that letter. But the letter goes out. It says that the arrears need to be brought up to date or the mortgage is going to be foreclosed. Assuming that that doesn't resolve the issue, uh, the bank will then start a, a court proceeding uh, whereby they file a petition in the Supreme Court uh, asking for, for, for relief and that it will have a number of relief uh, measures sought. One of those will be to have the property sold. Typically uh, the order is pronounced, that's called an order NISI, uh, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, I forget my Latin roots, yeah. but something like that. And the borrower will be given, will be given a redemption period, a period of time in which to redeem the mortgage, to either refinance the property, to sell the property, to do something to clear up this issue. So that redemption period is anywhere from one day to six months. And it will depend upon the equity in the property. So if there is equity in the property, if there's sufficient value in the property to pay out the mortgage, the borrower will be given a six month redemption period. If there's insufficient equity, if the value of the mortgage is greater than the value of the property, the borrower is typically given a one day redemption period. But that's that's kind of the start of it. Now, is that regardless if they're living in the property? It doesn't matter. So there's no. So say say for instance, there is no equity in the property. Um, that's right. Is it typically always that way that they're going to go to court and they're going to get a day maybe? If there's no equity in the property, that's the more common situation. It's not always that way, 
<clears throat> excuse me, but the more common situation, if there's no equity, the court will allow the bank to have a one-day redemption period because it's the bank's money at risk all of a sudden. They may not be paid out. Mm -hmm. So if there's no equity, it's as short as one day. It could be a little longer. It could be a week or two. But from what we've seen, it's either one day or six months. Right. Or the other. Right. Now, my experience, because I have been from the lender's perspective, when you send out this letter and they don't respond or they don't pay the money, so now you start the procedure. We talked about ignoring it. Now, I'm not sure what the, the exact terminology is for it, for the borrower to respond in terms of make sure that they're getting all right. the literature that's going on so that really nothing's happening that they don't know about. Right. Yeah, what, they should reply to the letter, but if they don't, when the bank starts their, their court action, they file their petition in the Supreme Court, they need to serve that upon the borrower, upon the registered owners of the property, they, and any gov, uh, guarantors or covenantors to the mortgage. So there's a service involved, um, and upon re, uh, being served with the documents, the borrowers, the guarantors, the covenantors, they have a certain period of time to file an appearance. It's a court document. It's a one-page document. You can do it yourself. You go to the court registry. You don't have the money to retain a lawyer. And you file an appearance in that court action. That guarantees that you will receive notice of every step in the court proceeding. So at the very least, you should file that appearance so you know what's going on with respect to your house. Right. So really nothing's happening without you knowing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and so you have to be those documents. So let's just say uh, foreclosure started on me. The, I've got my six months. So maybe I can't refinance. I enlist the services of a realtor. We put it up for sale. And we approach that six month period, hasn't sold. Mm -hmm. What happens then? So now, obviously, I'm worried about the lender now because my six months period up. So we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, a couple of things could happen. If, if you're being proactive, you're marketing the property, you've hired a realtor, they're doing all the steps, the bank may allow, uh, may just give you more time. Uh, if you can you know, keep your communication open with the lender, tell them all the efforts that you're doing the bank will generally allow you to continue to market that property. If you're doing nothing and just trying to live there rent free, well then they're going to try obviously and get you out. But at some point you need to have the property sold and if you're not able to do that, if your price points are unrealistic, if you're not marketing the property correctly, whatever the reason is, the bank has the right under that order on I side to go back into court for an order for conduct of sale. Mm -hmm. And that means the lender now has the power to sell the property. They hire the realtor they determine the price subject to an appraisal and satisfying the court as fair market value. Uh, they do all the marketing for it. They step into the shoes of the registered owner. That's after the redemption period. So if the property is not sold or if you cannot refinance the property, at some point the lender will take conduct of sale through a court order. They don't just get that. Out.